and welcome to Precision Sublimation Techniques for Apparel Production Houses. Our goal is to give you some real-world practical tips and guidelines for making sublimation an exciting and profitable part of your company's growth plan. In this video, we hope to give you a better understanding of the following. Paper tights and proper handling. Heat press guidelines. Garment preparation. And finally, pressing your garment. So let's get started. Once you have your prints completed and they are on a roll, it is important to remember to treat your paper with care. This is to eliminate any potential damage or contamination that could occur. Any issues with the roll can become expensive if not found until pressing. During the cutting operation, you should watch to make sure that there is a proper amount of space in between images of your paper. The paper you see here has an adhesive already applied before printing. There are several sublimation papers available on the market that have this tack element that keeps the paper in place during transfer. This can stop a lot of ghosting from happening and eliminates the need for heat tape and other processes to deliver a quality print. Sublimation requires a heat press for production. Now there are many types of presses that can work for sublimation, but when dealing with apparel, the rules are a little different. There are several features you will want your press to have in order to reduce your error rate. The heat press standards for apparel are a high quality manual press as opposed to an air operated or pneumatic press. This is because these presses will not be able to adjust the lowest pressure needed. Even consistent heat is critical in order for the color to be consistent across the transfer. Cooler areas of your heat plate will cause light spots in the image transfer. Pop-ups can be used, but they are not ideal. When the heat plate releases, it could cause ghosting. Finally, it is extremely important when the heat press is closed to have three-fourths of an inch or more gap in between the two plates. This is critical to avoiding paper and press lines from forming. We are using the Insta204, which has been very dependable. There are other good quality presses on the market. Our advice is to invest in a press that will last 10 to 15 years. The investment in quality is the best decision you can make. Now let's grab the supplies you'll need to go to press. Teflon sheets to cover your press. If you're not using tack paper, you will want heat tape on hand. You will need quite a few lint rollers for production. And a vapor foam kit. So now let's talk about why this is important. Here at the Vapor Labs, after many years of material research and process improvements, we have developed the vapor foam kit. This was developed to eliminate two sets of press lines you can see while sublimating garments. The first problem lines are from the top and bottom plate of your machine pressing into one another. The second set of lines are from the paper being pressed into the fabric of the shirt. Now let's talk about how we're going to eliminate each of these sets of lines. The first set of lines is eliminated by simply keeping the top of the press from coming in contact with the bottom of the press. As you see here, the foam is compressed about one third of an inch in height. That is all the pressure you'll need. For the second set of lines, the simple rule is that you want your transfer paper to hang over the foam on all sides. This allows the paper to float in between the top and bottom platen of the press. Your foam should be placed under the Teflon aligned to the spot where your transfer will be placed. Now that we have our foam, our transfers, and our press ready to go, let's press some shirts. Our first step will be to inspect and lint roll the garment. Contamination can have a very negative impact on your production error rate. A good sublimation house will average less than 2% fallout. Now in order to achieve this, you need to be clean. You should lint roll any part of the shirt that is going under the heat press. Our second step will be setting the shirt on the press. You should lay your entire shirt on top of the Teflon cover platen. There is no need to dress the press or sling the shirt if you use the proper time limit. You should not have any issues with blow through of the graphic. Make sure the shirts are set up the same way every time to ensure consistent placement. Step three, aligning your transfer. Now take your transfer and place it on the foam raised area. You should always check the lineup of your transfer more than once before pressing, making sure that all edges of the paper are off the foam raised area and that your entire image is in the right place. Step number four, securing your transfer. This step depends on the type of paper you are using. If you are using tack paper, you will not need heat tape. 
If you're using paper without tack, like we are here, make sure that you place the tape carefully. Try to keep two thirds of the tape on the transfer to limit any impact you could have on the garment. And now for our final step, pressing the shirt. You're going to set the heat onto the transfer in a nice even fluid movement. After your time has expired, you should lift the heat again in a smooth fluid motion. Wait two seconds and then slowly remove the transfer, starting in one quarter and then rolling the transfer off the shirt. And now we have completed the sublimation process. By following these key steps, you can be printing high margin performance apparel with sublimation in a matter of weeks. We hope that you have enjoyed this video. For further information, please reference the March issue of Impressions Magazine. Good luck and happy pressing from your friends at Vapor Apparel.